Hi there, I'm Alex Blinsky, and I'm excited to share with you some crazy and spiritual and funny stories from the Switzerland Zurich mission. I hope you enjoy. Rachel, I was always convinced that the tram in Zurich going up to or down from the mission home was going to break and we'd either fall to our deaths or be stranded on the side of the hill. But I wasn't worried enough to walk, apparently. From Emily, one time at the train station, we were super early for a train, so we went downstairs for a slushie. We had just discovered them earlier that week. Something happened that we got delayed and ending up, ended up having to run for the train. We got on just fine, and as we were trying to find a seat, the cars were very full. We got to the end of the cars and looked out, and the engine was facing away from us attached to another set of cars. My companion panicked, thinking the cars were... Um, we were on were attached, so she bolted out to run for the other cars. Just as we reached the door of the other cars, this train started to move. My companion saw the doors we had just left were still open. Yes, those cars were attached and jumped in. I ran to catch up and barely caught hold of the handle and jumped onto the bottom step. But by that time, the momentum was so strong that it was pushing me out of the train. So with one hand, on the handle and the other holding a slushy, there was no way I could get in. My companion already went to sit down without looking back. Suddenly I felt someone shove me into the car. As I was pushed in, the lid to my slushy flew off and behind me and half my slushy went with it. I quickly went in and sat down to catch my breath. A minute or two later, I went to the bathroom to clean up from the sticky mess that was all over my hand and arm and noticed the door was still open. As I went to close it, I saw the lid on the middle of the floor inside the, inside the train. It was as if someone had made a wall that pushed me and everything inside the train at the last moment. I closed the door and immediately the train began to stop and announced for someone to check for an open door. Delayed signal system, I guess. Embarrassed, I bolted into the bathroom and waited there for at least five minutes after cleaning up, hoping whoever checked would be gone. They weren't. So I quickly sat down with my companion, finished my slushy, and threw away the cup before whoever... Uh, it was could make a connection between the blue slushy all over the door and my cup, not to mention my soaked and dyed sleeve. I felt sorry for whatever poor angel was sent to save me that day and the new blue tint to their robes, but I am grateful they were there. That's nice of whoever that was. Jim, an old man was upset we were in his apartment building knocking doors and pulled out a gun and started waving it around, yelling at us in Swiss German. I thought we should stay and keep knocking doors and my younger companion said no. It's time to go. Jeff, we were walking alongside of a mountain from one small town to the next. I had my bicycle closer to the downhill slope so that my bike would go down the hill and not me. Well, my companion had his body closer to his bike than, um, than his bike to the downhill slope. He slipped and went down the mountainside about 100 feet or so. He was just fine, just a few scrapes, but the memory has been something I will always have. 100 feet or so, that is crazy. Glad he's okay. Rachel, we took a train out to a small village in our area. It only took about two, or eight, two hours to knock on every door in the village, and we were only let in two or three times. Plus, the people, the few people that would talk with us, I had a hard time understanding their country accent. When we went back to the train station, we found out there wasn't a return train for another six hours. We walked through the forest on a path to the next village, knocked those doors, and still had to wait two hours for a train back to Winterthur. The local bakeries were delicious, of course. Emily. We were going door to door when my companion, who always, have to use, who always had to use the restroom, needed to go very urgently. We finally came to a point where she couldn't hold it anymore, and there were no public restrooms around. The next door we went to, an old lady answered from her window. We presented ourselves and asked if we could share a message with her. She said no, and my companion yelled, yelled up as she was closing the window if she could use her toilet. The lady poked her head back and yelled back down, Is this a trick? My companion yelled back up, No, I just really have to go to the restroom. I'm paraphrasing here. After some hesitation, the lady let us in so she could use the bathroom, but I'm pretty sure the whole street could hear my companion yelling that she had to use the restroom. Jim, in my last area, I had two companions. We said a companionship prayer and then personal prayers. Two of us finished first, and the third appeared to still be praying. We turned out the light and within minutes heard him snoring, still in prayer position in a bear-like pose. When we woke up, he was still in the same position. <laughs> Only missionaries can relate to that kind of exhaustion, I guess. Uh, Jeff, 
We stayed at a hotel the first night. It included a continental breakfast. One of the missionaries I came with said we need to leave a tip. We later learned you don't need to leave a, leave a tip in restaurants in Europe at that time. From Rachel, when an investigator realized he really did want the gospel in his life and that his wife was, has been so patient in waiting for him to realize this. Emily, oh, so many spiritual experiences. One in particular I shared with my Sunday school class just last week. My companion and I were teaching this lady named Evelyn. Her husband's family were very active in the Catholic Church. Brother-in-law was a priest, sister-in-law was a nun, etc. We had been to her house a couple times and were trying to figure out what to teach her all day. Nothing was coming to mind. About 15 minutes before our lesson with her, my companion said, Let's just teach her about the Holy Ghost. I was hesitant because how much can you say about the Holy Ghost? It's like a five-minute lesson tops. But since I didn't have any better idea, I went with it and we taught her. She listened quietly to everything we had to say. After we finished, she told us that she had asked every priest and pastor from any church she visited about who or what the Holy Ghost was, and no one answered, could answer her questions, but that we had answered every one of them without her even asking them. We told her that if she had any more questions that we hadn't gotten to, or that she thought of while we weren't there, she could find them in the Book of Mormon. She said she didn't have any more questions, but that she didn't have any more time. So after... Uh, so we left after that. The next week, we met with her again, and she said she had found her answers in the Book of Mormon. It was an incredible experience. Jim, we were working with an investigator whose husband was against her investigating the church. We had tried for weeks or months to get her to come to church, but he wouldn't allow it. We decided to fast for her on a Saturday, and particularly for his husband, that his heart would be softened. Or for her husband. Um, the next morning, she showed up at church, and we knew the Lord had heard and answered our prayers. Jeff, feeling the darkness that surrounded the people when I was about to land in the country, and then having that feeling go away on the plane ride home. The other three missionaries I traveled with experienced the same thing too. Anyway, I hope you uh, enjoyed those stories from the Zurich mission. Uh, if you served in the mission and you're willing to help out, we'd love for you to fill out a survey. If you go to preparetoserve.com forward slash survey, there's a Google form there that you can answer as few or as many questions as you want. And that just helps us to build the resources on the mission pages um, for the Zurich mission, the mission page there. Um, also, if you're willing to be video interviewed about your mission for our YouTube channel, we'd love to interview you. You can just message us and we can set up a time. Um, we do the interviews in Utah and they usually last a good hour or so. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.